the sixth lecture on the concept of samvada and understanding the dialogic mind to me this is a very this is a very relevant and important issue that uh, we should understand the concept of samvada and uh, uh, sanskrit shastras provide a tradition where they not only discuss and make thread bear analysis of vada and how to carry vada and the whole uh, categories under vada they also discuss samvada but samvada doesn't uh, enjoy that uh, importance in the discussions only gotama in the fourth adhikarana says that uh, vada is for samvada that is the concept so that way samvada assumes added significance because in gotama's conceptual framework whole vada is to be done for samvada all debate should culminate into dialogues this is the concept so then the question comes how to create dialogue and today that is very much for very much important for our society for the world because the world is sinking going lower into the depths of degeneration as meaningful dialogues are not not happening as long as meaningful vadas and samvadas happen in a society that so that that society lives and rises we were jagat gurus because vadas and samvadas were happening in our society the 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 time when the vadas and samvadas were not happening that way there was degeneration so we have to think the how to create a dialogic mind samvadshil manas ka nirman kaise kiya jaye ये कुछ वाद पर जब मैंने काम किया तो मेरे मन में सवाल रहा है और मैं अपने स्वयं को जब देखता हूं तो मुझे लगता है कि मैं बहुत संवादशील पुरुष नहीं रहा और मैंने कई संवादशील पुरुषों के आचार व्यवहार का अध्ययन किया उन पर मैं बोलता रहा हूं वो मेरा बहुत मेरा एक प्रिय विषय भी रहा है वो संस्कृत क्षेत्र के बाहर है कि गांधी विनोबा जो बड़े संवाद पुरुष हैं वो किस तरह संवाद करते हैं क्या टेक्निक उनकी है और वेदर वी कैन लर्न फ्रॉम देम सो हाउ टू क्रिएट ए डायलॉगिक माइंड एंड द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ संवाद सो बिकॉज दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड रिलेवेंट एंड नाउ द इंटेलेक्चुअल्स इन अदर फील्ड्स दे आर फीलिंग देर आर कोर्सेज ऑफ कॉन्फ्लिक्ट मैनेजमेंट बींग इंट्रोड्यूस्ड इन सम यूनिवर्सिटीज like disaster management now because there is there are disasters so there is a discipline called disaster management and there there are conflicts so there is a discipline named conflict management and a lot of literature is being produced on conflict management so some people in the national law university of maharashtra came to know that i have worked on Uh, vada vada and samvada one of them actually one of the professors there had attended one of my workshops at bandarkar on vada so she proposed that you please teach us the whole concept of samvada in sanskrit tradition and they introduced some modules components in their course of conflict management so ever since this has been one of my areas of interest how to create a dialogic mind so i will not discuss whatever i am saying there you see Uh, for the non sanskritist people here mostly we are discussing shastra parampara so in our shastra how samvada is treated and uh, my proposition is that we should we have to consider samvada now not a part of vada it should be considered as an independent and important category and just as we propose to uh, build up a vada shastra we should have a samvad shastra and uh, the need for a samvad shastra especially arises because the broad concept of vada given by gotama where vada means all sorts of discussions dialogues and conversation between guru and shishya between two friends 
and uh, between so many groups in a community that is actually vada there jahan bola jaye conversation ho raha hai wahi vada hai and for uh, debate the other term is there in gotama system that is jalpa but what happened that buddhist nayai kas buddhist logicians they were great debaters so they hijacked this term vada from gotama but they narrowed the meaning of it and the prevalence of the term vada very much came in the sense of debate तो अभी तक भी 2000 सालों से वादा वाद का मतलब ज्यादातर हमारे यहाँ डिबेट माना जाता रहा तो वाद अगर हो रहा है धर्म कीर्ति और कुमारिल के बीच में दिंगनाग और सनातनी नैयायिकों के बीच में तो वो डिबेट है वो संवाद कम और डिबेट ज्यादा होगा इनहेरिट संवाद उसमें बहुत है अंत संवाद खूब होता है उस पर भी बहुत विवाद हो सकता है जैसे मुझे लगा कि गौड़पाद का एक अंत संवाद है नागार्जुन के साथ और बुद्ध का संवाद सीधे सीधे अंत संवाद बहुत गहरा अंत संवाद उपनिषदों के साथ है तो बुद्ध उपनिषदों की पारिभाषिक शब्दावली का प्रयोग करते हैं बुद्ध की पारिभाषिक शब्दावली का प्रयोग गौतमी न्याय के पंडित करते हैं और ये एक साइलेंट संवाद तो चलता है कि एक्नोलेज नहीं है उस पर कोई कहे कि शंकराचार्य जो प्रच्छन्न बौद्ध है तो बहुत लोग अपनी कुर्ते की बाहर चढ़ा के और हमारे ऊपर हमला करने को तैयार हो सकते हैं किसी ने कहा इस पर भी बड़ा विवाद हुआ था एक बार जब मैं उसका थोड़ा सा हिस्सा रहा कि रामानुज क्रिश्चियनिटी से प्रभावित हैं ये मैं उनका नाम भूल रहा हूँ वो अच्छे विद्वान हैं आदरणीय हैं विदेश के उन्होंने एक लेख छपा था तो वी आर पंचमुखी ने उसका बहुत ही प्रबल कटु खंडन किया कुछ एग्रेसिव होते हुए मैंने उनका लेख विमर्श पत्रिका में संस्थान में छापा था बहुत अच्छा है वी आर पंचमुखी बहुत विद्वान है उन्होंने सब प्रमाण बहुत सारी बातों का उसमें उन विद्वान का खंडन किया लेकिन फिर भी ये पूर्व पक्ष है और ये उठाया जाएगा क्योंकि ये किसी विदेशी विद्वान ने नहीं कहा कि शंकराचार्य प्रच्छन्न बौद्ध है ये तो मैं बताऊंगा जब मैं वेदांत देशिक पर बोलूंगा कि पूरी रामानुज परंपरा ये कहती है कि आप तो वही रिपीट कर रहे हैं जो नागार्जुन ने कहा है शंकराचार्य के लिए और आप प्रच्छन्न बौद्ध हैं तो ये जो अंत संवाद है वो अन एक्नोलेज ढंग से चलता है लेकिन उसको एक्नोलेज नहीं किया गया है और संवाद बहुत महत्वपूर्ण है अगर एक्नोलेज करते हैं तब तो बहुत अच्छी बात है और लेकिन संवाद तो होता रहता है विचार परंपराओं में वो बहुत गहरे स्तरों पर होता रहता है सो देर आर इनहरेंट डायलॉग्स एज वी वेर टॉकिंग फॉर दास टू डेज एंड प्रोफेसर माथुर आल्सो पॉइंटेड आउट that they the silence dialogues are continuing in the vichar paramparas in the thought processes of different uh, communities but uh, uh, samvad shastra is such that has now to be it has become imperative to consider it as a separate discipline considering that the the semantics of vada has been narrowed down in the tradition so i will come to the concept of samvada in gotama system In fourth adhikarana, he says, "Gyan grana bhyasas tad vidyesh sam vada." After acquiring the knowledge of the sixteen categories, he says that you, "Etesham tattva bhyasa nishreya siddhi." So after acquiring the knowledge and tattva bhyas of these sixteen categories, then you enter into sam vada. Without that, you you will not be emancipated. Only through debates and vada. like discussions and uh, 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 talks conversations only you will not be emancipated you have to enter into samvada with gyanis and that kind of that kind of samvada actually actually is termed satsanga in our later tradition although satsanga becomes a different uh, thing there it is in the bhakti period between the santas and bhaktas but you can also say that the gyanis have a satsang like the Congregation of eighty-eight thousand seers in Shonika sages in in uh, in that Nemisharanya and and uh, uh, this uh, Sutta Rishi is addressing them. That that is also a beauty of the tradition. You see, when we when we were talking of uh, uh, of the treatment to Shudras, we also have to consider that it is a Shudra who is speaking all the eighteen Puranas and the whole Mahabharata. before the seers before the 88 sages and a very beautiful story i i i might be digressing 
but i can't uh, resist the temptation of telling the very beautiful story in bhagavat and perhaps in padma purana is told when suta is speaking mahabharata before the 88000 seers rishis shonakadi maharshaya ekda nemisharanne the whole all puranas perhaps begin with that line in mahabharata also so balrama who didn't participate in mahabharata war and he set out for a pilgrimage he reached nemisharanya and he saw that a suta is sitting on the vyas gaddi on the, on a higher seat as a vyasa and he is he is telling mahabharata story to the seers so he got suddenly he got very angry balrama is a very orthodox person here and he he shouted that you come down i can't see you 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 are a lower caste person you are sitting like a vyasa on a higher seat than the seers you come down but suta was so immersed in his discourse you see uska bahut sundar varnan milte hai kaise rom harshan gadgad ho gaye unke romanch hai kisi katha ko sunate hue he was lost in in his narrative he didn't listen so balrama in an angry mood he hurled his hurled uh, his plow on the suta perhaps uh, he was rom harshan ukrashava and rom harshan these two names are given इन पुराणास उन्होंने अपना हल फेंक करके मारा बलराम की तो क्या कहना है वो तो हल उनका वज्र की तरह था तो मर गए वो मार डाला उन्होंने अब आगे जो होता है वो इम्पोर्टेंट है कि वो अठासी हजार ऋषियों ने बलराम से कहा कि हमने तुम हमने इसको बिठाया है व्यास की गद्दी पर हमने इसको व्यास पाना है अपना और तुमने जो इसकी हत्या की वो ब्रह्म हत्या तुमने की है तो तुमको सारे प्रायश्चित ब्रह्म हत्या के करने पड़ेंगे this is also a tradition the sutas who were actually shudras continuing to the growth of puranas and the whole akhyana literature and for that they were revered there was a kingdom of sutas the angadesh perhaps given to karna so they were revered also and in the in the yagyavedi in the nirman of in the construction of yagyavedi they had to play a role there were rituals where suta had to be shudras had to be present actually so this was something other i will uh, you see not go into the details of elsewhere i am talking i have been talking about these things and uh, these are things sometimes they also agitate us sometimes sometimes we are enamored of the beauty of the tradition and uh, in, in this way the dialogues uh, our vada and samvada with the tradition continues to happen but it should percolate in the society it could it didn't percolate that is the problem so Uh, after acquiring acquisitioning the knowledge of these 16 categories one should enter into dialogue with kyanis with the knowledgeable ones this is what uh, gotama recommends and vatsyayana vatsyan bhash is very important and he says that what is gyana here gyayate aneneti gyanam adhyatma vidya shastram tasya grahanam adhyayana dharane now he has learned these 16 categories when he will enter into dialogue with the gyanis he will enter into the area of adhyatma vidya that will elev- with this very dialogue the very samvad will elevate him to the level of spirituality so wherever there is wherever, wherever there is a samvada you rise to the level of spirituality this this actually you can experience whenever you have a samvada in poetry they talk of hriday samvada the whole concept of samvada is there in our poetry anand vardhana such a great theorist he is talking of samvada the concept of samvada treating it at length in his dunya loka and very subtle categories of bimb pratibimb sadash alekhya prakhya and tulya dehi tulya these three categories of samvada and rash shekhar contributing to the discussion by adding the fourth one parpur pravesh sadash the sadash they are very subtle concepts in our literary theory of samvada between two classics two literatures two poets and how they elevate the whole tradition how the samvada between the anta samvada between kalidas and bhavuti elevates the whole literary tradition and we can uh, through the theory also we can know how bhavuti has entered into the dialogue how magha enters into a dialogue with bharavi so and that that uh, creates a sort of a spiritual world to me that is spirituality when samvadas are happening amongst the uh, individuals with, uh, within us if there is a samvada 
within us that is the level of that is spirituality for me i i don't understand any any other meaning of spirituality there is a harmony within it has nothing to do with the, the whole concept of dharma we, we we walk into a different area we when we enter into the adhyatma vidya and uh, that happens through samvadas so the satsanga and the discussions in the form of dialogues hriday samvada vichar samvada they contribute to the making of the level of spirituality and this the world very much needs that sari duniya mein ab ye ehsaas hai ki jo जो स्पिरिचुअलिटी है उससे वंचित हम लोग हो गए अब तो पश्चिम में भी मानते ही है लोग वहां भी स्पिरिचुअलिटी रही है ऐसा नहीं मानना चाहिए कि हम ही लोग बड़े अध्यात्मवादी रहे मैं इसका बहुत खंडन करता हूँ कि हमारा देश बड़ा धर्मप्राण और अध्यात्मवादी था और यूरोप भौतिकतावादी था और मटीरियलिस्टिक पूरा यूरोप था ये गलत है बहुत बहुत स्पिरिचुअलिटी वहाँ के लोगों में भी बहुत रही है मैं तो अभी भी देखता हूँ मैं खूब यूरोप में गया हूँ और अभी भी यहाँ हूँ कई कई जगह कई बार लगता है कि हमसे ज्यादा स्पिरिचुअल ये लोग हैं क्योंकि उनके भीतर आनंद है भले ही उनके अंतर विरोध जो भी हो हम तो उस आनंद से वंचित हो गए जो, जो उपनिषदों में आनंद है तो जब संवाद होता है तो हम उस आनंद के स्तर पर पहुंचते हैं आप कविता में संवाद करते हैं तब भी आप यू रीच दैट लेवल ऑफ प्लिस आनंद एंड देट इज संवाद एंड देट लीड्स टू दार्मोनी एंड देट इज वेरी मच नीडेड so vatsyayana and gotama they are talking of that level and how to create that level they are talking of the stages abhyas karna chahiye bar bar jo wo kehte hain uske liye satat adhyayan shravan this uh, very important concept of shravan you see listening so we have even forgotten what listening means you see and what is the difference between listening and hearing so normally we are hearing we are not listening what what shravana means in our tradition that you become one with what you are listening to that is actually the shravana hriday samvad aapka usse hota hai jab aap shravan karte hain nahi to aapke kaan sunte hain aur aap dimag se thoda soch sakte hain that is not uh, listening that is not shravana actually so whenever when i am uh, invited to talk about the main about the main of dialogue there in some law university or other institution i cite an example actually i will omit many details and that is something which i i can't help uh, citing so wahan par main ek udaharan film se deta hu there is a film on gandhi by richard attenborough i like that film uh, i don't uh, if i am remembering the name correctly richard attenborough is the director or the hero who enacted gandhi there he 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 is a very good actor he became almost one with gandhi when he is doing gandhi you see they were our, our colonizers angrez nahi wo film banayi hai unhi logon ne humko ronda khub looda unhi mein se ek aadmi bahut acha filmkar intellectual hai wahi bahut sundar film banata hai so there is a scene in that film that gandhi ji is listening to rajkumar shukla rajkumar shukla is a farmer he has come from champaran now this rajkumar shukla is telling the woes of neel farmers to gandhi ji champaran mein nilhe jo gore hai neel ki kheti zabardasti karane wale itna bhayankar atyachar kiya hai roma us par neel darpan natak hai bengali mein ek bahut adbhut natak hai bahut romanchit natak hai wo jab khela jata tha to log hathiyar leke khade ho jate the angrezon ke khilaf ki kaisa atyachar ye log kar rahe hain तो वो सारे अत्याचारों की कथा वो राजकुमार शुक्ला गांधी जी को सुनाते हैं गांधी जी इज लिसनिंग ही इज नॉट हियरिंग सो द एक्सप्रेशन ऑन द फेस ऑफ दैट एक्टर ही कुड अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट गांधी इज सो ही बिकम्स ऑलमोस्ट वन विथ विथ व्हाट राजकुमार शुक्ला इज टेलिंग वो सारी जो व्यथा है किसानों की वो लगता है कि उससे वो एकाकार हो गए उससे तदाकाराकार वो हो गए हैं तो गांधी में लिसनिंग की बहुत कम लोगों में होती है जैसे मुझ में नहीं है मैं तो मानता हूँ इस चीज को आई आई हैव वेरी लिमिटेड कैपेसिटी ऑफ श्रवण एंड मेनी ऑफ अस वुड लुक इन साइड टू देम पर दे वुड फाइंड दैट दे आर दे डोंट हैव दिस कैपेसिटी ऑफ श्रवण सो दिस श्रवण इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू बी ए मैन ऑफ दायला गांधी वॉज ए ग्रेट मैन ऑफ दायला गांधी डिडेंट फेल यू सी वी फेल्ड हिम as a man of dialogue as a leader of the country as the father of nation i believe that uh, 
we failed him and he he was brutally murdered by us by not only by one person by us also because we failed him we we, we are not rising to that level he, he was trying to bring us to that level that was that is another thing and there are many things said about gandhi i won't go into the detail there is no time and about vinoba also he is he is also one of the most misunderstood figures also he is very important personality to me that way enormous literature of vinoba a great sanskrit pandit writing a samya sutram in sanskrit that is itself is a text in dialogue a new shastra so that is another thing but this quality of adhyayan then shravana and then chintan uh, after abhyasa this is very important and then tad vidyai sa samvada pragya paripakartham you have to enter into dialogue with those who know that so that it leads you leads you to a pragya paripak if pragya paripak is there that is what to me is a level of spirituality in gotama system because udayana says that all this nyay charcha will elevate you to the godly ness nyay charcha yab ishasya manana vyapadesha bhag so the whole vada is being carry carried out to reach that state of harmony within okay that is pragya paripak and there is sanshay chedan avigyat arth bodh and adhyavis adhyavasita bhyanugya all these qualities happen and gotam this vatsyana himself says that it, it is a state of harmony samaya vada samvada vada is there conversation and discussion okay and talk between equals or between teacher and uh, disciple but when that all that conversation etc culminates into samata then it becomes samvada then it is a state of harmony so samvada leads an individual to the state of harmony a society a community to the state of harmony it may lead the whole world to a, to that state of harmony therefore samvadas are very much nehru was trying to make that kind of samvada you see with other world leaders with nasir he entered into samvada with with perhaps kennedy he enters into samvada he was also a man of dialogue uh, and uh, many other persons of our time so they were trying to create that harmony in the society through samvada and uh, i cite khadyotika also even when i teach to this law student i am delivering lectures to the law students i cite this ganganath jha khadyot is a very good tika and uh, he makes very pertinent remark ganganath jha you see such a great scholar he translated into english translations are necessary you see to have dialogue with the with the other audiences with the people of other subjects so he translated this nyay sutra and so many texts such voluminous work by him but he also wrote commentaries in sanskrit like a traditional commentator and there he makes very pertinent remarks you see so he agrees with vasyayana and he says that anvikshiki anvikshiki shastrasya adhyayanam shravanam chintanam cha apvarga sadhanam so after this whole vada this anvikshiki shastra through adhyayana and shravana and chintana would lead to apvarga to the mukti of an then the next sutra i will omit these jalpa and vitanda sometimes you have to adopt take recourse to 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 protect your system he gives the example of a kantak shakha varan jhadiyan jaise aap hedge lagate hain podhe ko bachane ke liye tree guard lagate hain so they work like tree guards the jalp and vitanda to protect your system to protect your faith so you can uh, take recourse to them only to continue to observe your dharma and your system not for any destructive purpose this is what this ganganath jha's remarks are very also very pertinent you see this jalp uh, uh, and vitanda should be carried out by the intellectuals so that this mati vibhram of the, of the ishwaras can be eradicated jo satta ke mad mein garvile log hain unko convince karne ke liye ye jal par vitanda ki bahas yadi gyani karta hai to ye jal par vitanda ka ye prayojan hai uska swarth ke liye koi upyog jal par vitanda ka nahi hona chahiye 
जब जय राशि भट्ट तत्वप्ल सिंह तत्वप्ल सिंह में वे वितंडा कर रहे हैं या नागार्जुन जब वितंडा का पूरा ना ग्रंथ रच रहे हैं तो किसी व्यक्तिगत स्वार्थ के लिए नहीं है वो मुक्ति के लिए है उनके लिए सो न लाभ पूजा आदि दृष्टम ये दृष्ट फल के लिए फॉर दि दृष्ट दृष्ट फल लाभ पूजा एटसेट्रा दिस वितंडा एंड जल्प इज नॉट टू बी यूटिलाइज बट इट शुड ऑल्सो बी यूटिलाइज टू क्रिएट द स्टेट ऑफ संवाद दीज आर दमेंट्स वाई खद्योत कारा हुई सरगंगा नाथ झा and then i will omit these details not much to talk about many things are obvious you see just as vadas are of different types samvadas can be of different types they can differ on the basis of themes purpose there can be samvadas in shastra then can be samvadas in amongst uh, classics literary text see ts eliot is one of my favorite uh, authors and uh, there are two or three of his essays tradition and modernity and so he he talks of dialogues between two great authors a modern author and a, and an author and he says that uh, whenever we find an author of our times saying something which an ancient author had already said in his words we we see that we are not only reading our contemporary author we are rereading the earlier author also and then we are rereading the whole tradition apne samay ke kisi rachnakar ko jab hum padhte hain aur usme prachin kisi kriti ko pratibimbit dekhte hain to humko lagta hai ki puri prachin kriti ka bhi punah paath usne kiya hai something like that this is literary dialogue so the whole tradition gets revived through through these dialogues and there are dialogues in silence buddha was a great man of dialogue very very great personality in dialogues and he knew how to make dialogues in silence even when you are sitting in silence you you do you perhaps do not know that you are making dialogues in silence you are you are sending vibrations which may be affecting and if you understand those vibrations you know you can know the language of silence so okay there is some time so i uh, i cite an example a story whenever i am i am asked to deliver a lecture amongst such an audience where shastrakaras are not there the la people might be there so i cite an story from two biographies of j krishna murthy mary lutens uh, is a britisher she spent so many years many years with j krishna murthy who was a great dharma guru and a great very great personality of uh, dialogue a great sambad purush of our time if you listen to him you can uh, read how his techniques of samvada so when whenever you listening to a great person you should try to decipher how he is communicating what are his techniques for dialogue what are the techniques of buddha for for making a dialogue what, what are the techniques of mahavira for making a dialogue they are, they are depending on the vibhajyavada buddha is depending on vibhajyavada uh, the 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 madhyama pratipad so what he does that whenever he is talking of a category he will he will make so many sub categories out of that that this is the alternative this is the alternative this is the alternative then he will separate them he will define the extremes extremities ye ye atiya hai inko hum nikal dete hain then what whatever the middle path remains that that we should have to consider and through that way he would develop a language of dialogue through that way he would talk mahavira would talk out of his uh, concept of anekantavada maybe this is true from one angle maybe this is true from one angle maybe this is true that saptabhangi nahi syad asti syan nasti syan nasti cha asti cha etc so you consider the category from all these seven angles and then you you try to make a dialogue out of that so so they, their own conceptual framework has come to help them to create a dialogic universe and the way that way buddha and mahavira are creating dialogues they are great dialogue person in detail we can make a study of their dialogic strategies so uh, um uh, we, we can uh, you see create this theory of uh, samvadas uh, and their various levels of samvada then uh, okay i will omit these details this beautiful stanza is cited you all 
you might, might be knowing it. Chitram Bhatta Tarur Mule Radha Shishya Guru Riva Gross to Monam Vyakyanam Shishya Suchinna Sanshaya. And perhaps uh, yeah. I used to think that it is all superstition, you see. But there is one of our friends, Pandit Uma Shankar Rishi. He's a great scholar and a very good friend of ours. So I was with him. So he used to tell me one of his about one of his meetings with Gopinath Kaviraj. Gopinath Kaviraj himself is a great personality of dialogue. How he creates dialogues with his uh, with the people who are sitting in his audience. That is another thing. Being a great philosopher, a great tantric sadhak. So Umashankar Sharma Rishi uh, must be telling uh, truth. I believe in him. So he told me that once he went to meet Gopinath Kavirajji because he was having doubts on Niruktam. He has edited and translated the text of Niruktam. His, his books are very much consulted amongst us. His translation of Niruktam and other texts. So he had some doubts about Niruktam and he thought that Gopinath Kavirajji would uh, be able to clear his doubts. So he went to him. And he, Gopinath Kaviraji's house was almost an academy. Everybody could enter and had dialogue, had dialogue with him. So he went to his house and said, I have some doubts about Niruktam, about Yaska Nirukta, and I want to uh, discuss them with you. So Gopinath Kaviraji's method was that whenever somebody, somebody came to him to discuss anything, he would tell him, come tomorrow. At 11, you come tomorrow. And then I will listen to you. So he told him the same thing. You come tomorrow at 11 and I will listen to you. So Mashankar Sharma Rishi told me that uh, I went to him next day at the time given and I said before him, I was silent and he was silent. And suddenly I felt that whatever doubts were within me, they were worthless things, you see. I can, I can consider them and clear them. What is the need of discussing them with such a great person? I will reconsider them. I will go to uh, uh, my home and uh, consult the commentary of Durga Charya and maybe they will be cleared. They are small issues. And let me sit silently here. So this is what he was feeling. He must be telling the truth. I believe in uh, uh, Professor Rishi. So, uh, so such dialogues actually happen, you see, that somebody is sending a message to you. So these dialogues, the dialogues in silence are very much important. Vinoba used to have such dialogues, those who were with him. Actually, those who are talking a lot of rubbish about him, they have not seen him. They only read some news as about his statement on emergency. He did not say anything about emergency like that. He's, he's completely cited uh, uh, wrongly. So he's, he said he used to have Monavrat and he went into silence for many days sometimes. So he said, all speeches and talks merge in silence. And when uh, Jayaprakash was, Jayaprakash Narayan was very much ill. And he said that I want to meet Vinoba. Last thing, his last wish was, you see, that I want to see Vinoba. And, you know, and, he, and Vinoba was told that JP, he, he used to call him JP. Vinoba was told that JP wants to see you and want to talk him. Vinoba said that I will go to meet him at the airport. He, he was flying from, uh, from perhaps from uh, Maharashtra to Delhi for his treatment. And uh, Na at Nagpur, his plane was to stop. Vinoba said that I will go to Nagpur to meet him. People told him that you are observing Monvrat. And how would you talk to him? He said, that I, will break, I will break my Monvrat to talk to JP. Because I, knew, I know that he is in distress. So he was a man of dialogue. And he knew that silences can be broken. If a person is in distress and you are unable to communicate with him in silence, Buddha knew how to talk. In, there are so many stories about Buddha, how he, he is talking through his silences. He is handing over a flower to one of the monks who is raising a question about uh, dharma to him. And that monk understands the symbol of the, that flower handing, handed over to him by Buddha. So this uh, uh, whole the concept of Samvada. So because there are people from Sahitya Vaga here, the whole concept, we have been discussing about these categories of literary dialogues, the conceptual framework of literary dialogues. I, I won't go into the details of these.
संवादाज इन लिटरेचर इट विल बी ए वेरी बिग टॉक सो एंड सच डायलॉग एक्चुअली आर हैपनिंग इन आवर टाइम्स सो देर इज ए डायलॉग बिटवीन विद्या निवास मिश्रा एंड राफेल आर्गुलोल ए स्पेनिश फिलोसफर ए मॉडर्न स्पेनिश फिलोसफर एंड आवर आवर फिलोसफर फ्रेंड फ्रॉम फ्रॉम स्पेन आई एम फॉर गेटिंग इज नेम ही इज अ गुड फ्रेंड ऑफ आवर से फिलोसफी मैन ही इज एम्बेसडर नाउ so he has edited the this book uh, from mediterranean to ganges dialogues between vidyanivas mishra and rafael argulol i will not go into the details that is a wonderful text of dialogues you see a, a pandit from india having a dialogue having dialogues for two months in different meetings with a with a very modern western philosopher who said that who said that there can be no dialogues between us i belong to the european tradition after two world wars the whole experience of the horror of modernity we have suffered through and you are people you are living in your own world there can be no dialogue between you and us and vidyani asmishra said that we will discuss we will talk about then slowly the dialogue happened he is a very brilliant philosopher so these are the lines he said they are in the in those dialogues we need a sort of continuous dialogue between persons who do not treat knowledge as power who want to use knowledge as process of understanding a process of becoming that can bring together all living beings it is a process of love and a process of discovering what has been universal across cultures you see it appears to me that this philosopher rafael argulol is saying almost what gotama and vasyana and his and his tikakara ganganath cha we are trying to derive a state that the whole harmony can be developed when knowledge is not treated as a tool of power and what what is the problem with world today that the knowledge is being treated as a tool of power mere paas jitna data hai utna hi main powerful hu aur main duniya ko hila kar ke rakh dunga main duniya par kabu kar lunga भारत में भी यही है अमेरिका और यूरोप में भी यही है सो दी होल ट्रेडिशन एंड दी मॉडर्न फिलासफर एंड दी ट्रेडिशनल पंडित सेइंग द सेम थिंग एंड दी होल न्याय सिस्टम सेइंग द सेम थिंग दैट वी हैव टू क्रिएट अ डायलॉगिक सिचुएशन वेयर नॉलेज इज नॉट ए टूल ऑफ पावर इट इज ए मीन्स टू अटेंड हारमोनी विद इन एंड विदाउट सो this is what the dialogue happens other things other details i will omit well, these qualities of a person of dialogue these are obvious things clarity of ideas clear conscience aap apne chitt mein shuddh nahi hai to aap kya khak sambhav karenge about gandhi i can say that he was a nirmal hriday about inova also i can say people because they are not understanding them properly they make allegations that is another thing but about buddha and mahavira and about vinoba and gandhi i say that they are pure in heart whatever wrongs they might have done gandhi maybe he has committed some mistakes or he might not have committed there can be agreements and disagreements there can be vadas and vivadas about that but they are nirmal hriday they have a pure they have a purity of heart and because they have a purity of heart therefore they can become a man of dialogue i am not perhaps pure in heart to that level therefore i fail to make uh, great dialogues that that may be my limitation that may be the limitation of uh, many of us so uh, we have to clear our own conscience we have to look within to be a man of dialogue buddha had to perform a great penance then he gave this whole idea of vipassana uh, this this medi- meditation to clear your conscience and if you do vipassana then perhaps you can understand that how i can go to to a, to to build up a dialogic mind so a clarity of ideas is required morality and purity of heart is required quality of listening as we have told and appreciating the other sympathy with the other the outlook of the other if you just try to talk your about your own view and don't don't listen to the other side then you cannot become so buddha used to listen first to the person who came to him to tell something he said okay you speak 
and every man of dialogue would do that gandhi would do that so <clears throat> i will omit these details about uh, allegations by ramanuja 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 ramanujaites followers of ramanuja about shankaracharya and his inherent dialogues and uh, th this is a list of dialogue men of dialogue it, it, you can cite hundreds of names and uh, if you if you study the lives and deeds of these persons you can perhaps know what strategy they adopted to become a man of dialogue and it is very much important for us to understand those strategies strategies and their methodology of be, uh, becoming a man of dialogue this uh, sant gyaneshwar eknath you see eknath i have referred earlier he has written a text hindu turk samvada because he was uh, he was uh, uh, thinking about the possibility of dialogue between these two traditions which dara shuko did later on and uh, all these saints are doing the same thing kabira and they have their own strategy they they their, their own methodology of uh, of of dialogue kabir if you study his literature uh, his his uh, sakhi or his dohas you see and where he addresses somebody as sadhu to whom he is addressing to himself or to some other sadhu uh, and how the dialogue is happening with the sadhu or meera or anybody uh, like i talk about rama bai also uh, although she is a much much debatable personality of our times so and many others can be added to this this uh, list and uh, so what i just want to say that the absence of a single center a single universe and allowance for uh, many centers have helped to create a dialogic help to create dialogic situations this we should understand that dialogues cannot happen meaningfully if there is a uni linear view if there is a single universe and single center like in the western universe to some extent now they have also changed a lot but uh, if if you don't have a pluralistic view of life and uh, creation and if you don't have the 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 capacity to appreciate various other schools various other thinkers you can't have a meaningful dialogue so this allowance for many centers many peripheries vidya nivas mishra ji used to say that that there is not there is no single center in our whole tradition there are many centers and many peripheries they are crossing with each other and this was the language he was trying to uh, create a dialogue with rafael argulel argulol who ultimately he, was, he is a brilliant person and a good philosopher also so he understood him and he then appreciated the whole tradition also so the dialogue happened there and uh, uh vested interest of the interlocutor his or her ego hatred for a man or community fear and lack of self assertion linguistic barriers difference of life styles outlooks and world views and the relationship of subjugator and the subjugated these are impediments in the process of dialogue these these some of these terms are picked, picked up from albiruni's text you see albiruni himself is a great man of dialogue and in the beginning of his uh, text on in, his work on india he discusses the difficulties of a foreigner coming to study indian culture in making dialogues with the culture of these people so he, he very subtle categorizations is he makes there that foreigner might be having his own prejudices and he might be having his linguistic barrier and he he might be having a superiority complex he came with mahmud gajni and uh, they had a kind of superiority complex that we are invaders we, we will loot this country so he or she might be having that that uh, that uh, superiority idea that would work as an impediment to in having dialogues and uh, i i do not want to cite Albi, cite alberoni in detail here but uh, some such impediments he talks about there subtle categorizations he makes and the 
the difficulties from the other sides also. The other side is not prepared to make dialogues. He said that they are not prepared to give me the, their manuscripts. I convinced them that I will study them. I will study your Gita. He was a Sanskritist. He is studying Gita and Upanishad. Eventually, he got the manuscripts and he refers to so many texts in his work. But they are reluctant to give the copies of their manuscripts, even when we are buying uh, uh, that from them. They are sinking within themselves. This is also a question about our tradition. Sometimes we shrink within ourselves. Shutur Murga ki tarah hum reth mein apni chonch gada kar ke aur bed jate hain ki hum ko dunia se koi lena dena nahi hai. Humara gyan koi paana chahata hai. To pata nahi ho chura kar ke pata nahi kya atom bomb bana lega aur pata nahi kya karega. Hum ko usko nahi dena apna. Aisa samaj kar ke. So this also is an impediment in the way of dialogue. That a person who, who is a seek, who might be a seeker of knowledge and wants to enter into a dialogue with you, you refuse to enter him into your arena. And all these things are there, this adhikari, who should be the adhikari, and you discriminate. And then on the basis of that, even as great a person as Ambedkar, he is denied the right of studying Veda. Mahadevi Varma, a great Sanskritist also. She was a Sanskrit student, a great poetess, one of the greatest poets of Hindi. She was denied admission in the Veda uh, group of MA Sanskrit. She said, you are, the teacher said, you are a lady and we won't teach you Veda. Ultimately, she studied Veda and translated some of the Vedic, Vedic hymns in beautiful Hindi. He, she translated Karidasa's Raghuvansha in beautiful Hindi and a great poetess. That is a different thing. But shrinking ourselves in a narrow world and refusal to enter into the dialogue with a seeker of knowledge who might be a genuine person. This is the imped impediment of a dialogue because dialogues cannot be one-sided. Ek haath se tali nahi bachti. Dialogue to dono taraf se hota hai. Gandhi is trying to make dialogue with Ambedkar. Gandhi is trying to make dialogues with Nehru, Patel and all others who are not Coming to him to listen to him after uh, independence, none of these great leaders are discussing Gandhiji with him. They are rather abusing him. Whatever he is talking, they think that he has become mad. And in his own way, Gandhi has his own logic of telling them he doesn't stop dialogue. Still, he doesn't stop dialogue. He is repeatedly addressing them. So, this was the tragedy with Gandhi that his own man, you see. They simply failed him. They, they stopped having dialogues with him. So if the other side is not listening to you, you even a, as great a man as Gandhi or Buddha or Mahavira won't be able to make uh, dialogue. So uh, this uh, both side communication should be there. So I will omit these details, details also. Presence of many individuals is necessary. At, le at least more, more than one individual whether within or without, even if you are having dialogues within, having a dialogue within, you must uh, bifurcate yourself, divide yourself into two individuals. Then you will have a dialogue within. So in this way, presence of many, many or more than one is necessary, etc. Uh, it, it, it will be a wrong, uh, it will be a presumption to think that extroverts can be better dialogue persons and introverts cannot be good dialogue persons. Both, there are so many persons who are very extrovert. Both milan saar hai, both jada milte julte hai, hello hi, hello hi, jisse milenge usse, arre bhiya kya, kya ho raha hai, dunia bhar ki baate karenge. They are rubbish, they are talking of rubbish and they are not at all dialogue with persons. Koi radhe sambad wo nahi kar, karte hai. Many extrovert persons are there. They, they, unko lagta hai ki sari dunia ki chinta unhi ki hai. Aap kya kar raha hai? Aap aajkal kya likh raha hai? Radha Vallab ji, aap kya likh raha hai? Tumhare baap ka kya mein le raha hai? Mein kuch likh raha hai ya kar raha hai? Tumko kya karna? Tum apna karo bhai. So all sorts of things they would inquire. They, they are extrovert. They are not making dialogues. Because I, I, I need not discuss it with them. My, my inner, uh, inner world, what I am thinking and what I am, because I, I know that they won't be enter into uh, a dialogue with me. They are simply curious what this fellow is doing, what he will, what he is up to. 
so many times the dialogues may not be happening with the extroverts and many times the dialogues might be happening with great introverts like krishna murti so i will uh, finish with telling another story about krishna murti that this dalai lama at the age of 21 in 1956 he came to india he was the political head of tibet tibet ke wo rashtrapati ek tarah se the and he was the dharma guru of the whole country and as a young man he came to the country with his retinue the government of india uh, treated him as a as a state guest and he said that i will go to chennai a whole special train was arranged for him to go to chennai uh, because uh, such a large gathering he won't be uh, traveling by by aircraft etc and one appa sahib pant who was the chief secretary to the government of india was asked to accompany him so they were sitting in the same compartment and appa sahib pant thought that perhaps he would be interested to listen about j krishnamurti so he told him that there is a j krishnamurti who also lives in madras and he says this he says this he said that the world is you and you are the world etc so the lai lama suddenly became uh, uh, became curious and he said that he is a nagarjuna if he is saying these things he is a nagarjuna for me and i will meet him so appa sahib pant didn't reply he said that he will for he, he 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 thought that he will forget but the moment the lai lama as a young man of 21 he reached uh, madras he said that i want to go to meet j krishnamurti now the problem is that j krishnamurti has uh, broken up his relationship with theosophical society any be sent and he is living in a very small small uh, lane in madras in a small house and this political head of tibet he cannot be brought uh, sent to that that uh, small gali or uh, uh, lane and appa sahib pant tried to convincing that it will not be proper for you to meet j krishnamurti and he will not be available but he insisted no no i will go to meet j krishnamurti and uh, ultimately they had somehow to arrange his meeting with j krishnamurti j krishnamurti perhaps he was uh, 70 or 60 years old and he was this dalai lama is 21 years old young man so the meeting as described by appa sahib pant to these ladies one is putul uh, pupul jaykar who was also chief secretary to the to the government of india and she was she became a follower of j krishnamurti and another is mary lutkens so the uh, account of uh, the meeting of the lai lama with j krishnamurti given by appa sahib pant as narrated by these two biographers who have been with j krishnamurti uh, appa sahib pant said then said uh, told them that uh, the lai lama entered the room he said them he said before j krishnamurti and he made only one remark to j krishnamurti sir you have seen divine after that both of them were silent and in between they were talking in monosyllables sometimes he said yes he also said yes and what they are talking he couldn't understand one hour they are sitting like that after that lai lama just offered him anjali hath uh, joda unhone and he said okay let us go coming out the lai lama made a remark to appa sahib pant he is a great soul and a great dialogue he pant so uh, dialogues in silence might be happening that way and we should also create a uni- universe where such dialogues may happen i will not go into the details yes so five or 10 more minutes i will uh, try to uh, make my points within that there are uh, text of dialogue just, just just as there are vad granthas and various kinds of vad granthas are there texts structured in vada texts discussing vadas that have happened there might be texts discussing samvad shastra there can be texts uh, making dialogues between different systems so some such sangra granthas are there which make an attempt to create dialogue between different schools of thought and they have their own uh, strategy of uh, 
they have their own dialogic strategies. So to me, Haribhadra Suri of 6th century, a Jaina philosopher, is one such philosopher of dialogue because he is trying to make dialogues with various schools of thought. He is a wonderful person, you see. Even when he has these disagreements, he, he tries to search the inherent unities between rival systems also. So he, 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 has, he, he has his own methodology of dialogue making because he comes from, an, from a thought world of Anekanta, from the system of Anekanta. So maybe this is true in relation to that. So in, in that way, he will be talking. He is a staunch opponent of Shunyavada and Nagarjuna. But maybe they are talking of Shunyavada from this point of view. To that extent, Shunyavada may be acceptable. In this way, he would make dialogues with, with Advaita Vedanta and with, with Nayaikas and with other schools of thought. So the, his Shat Darshan Samuchya is the first text of a kind of Sangragantha discussing six schools of Indian philosophy. Later on, then there is a Madhvacharya writing Sarvadarshan Samuchya and then other uh, texts are also there. But Haripadra Suri, as, as far as I know, was the first person to have made an attempt to see a kind of dialogues between six schools which are actually stand apart, which, which may be rival schools. And he is trying to search inherent unities also between. So his uh, Shad Darshan Samuchya is one such text. And, and each of these authors, they have their own dialogic strategy, you see. The author of Shad Darshan Samuchya has his own, his own methodology of dialogue. Madhvacharya has his own methodology of seeing a dialogue between different systems. He's, he puts them in an ascending order. The lowest system, as it appears to him, will be kept in the first position, then second, and in final, if there are 15 darshanas for Madhavacharya, the Advaita Vedanta will be the 15th one. So there is a, there is a standing order. Um, they, they, they are like a staircase, the, the ascending order, you can say. So Urdu Sopan Parampara, you can say. So he, he, would, he would try to show that uh, there is a growth of thought world and they culminate into Advaita Vedanta according to him. In this way, he will, create, he will see a dialogue. There are some modern texts also, like some, these Sangra Granthas. There is a very good book by Sripad Shastri Hasurkar. Dvadash Darshan Sopanavali. I think this book is not available, but it's a very good book, even for students and teachers of philosophy. In a very simplified way, he raises five questions and discusses all the 12 systems on the basis of these systems. What is the, what is the Shasti Prakriya in this system? What is the concept of God in this system? What is the concept of Atman in this system? What is the concept of Moksha in this system? And then he would discuss each and every system on the ground of these questions. And in a very simplified way, he will explain all these systems. This is another way of seeing inherent unities and creating dialogue between diverse systems. Then there are some very good works have been produced in 20th century also. There is Saromata Sangraha by, no, it is not 20th century, it is an earlier text. Saromata Sangraha by Narayan Bhatta, published from Oriental Research Institute, Manuscript Library, Trivendram. And works by modern authors are also there. After Hasurkar, there is Gopal Shastri, Darshan Kesari. He is a wonderful pandit. So he delivered lectures on Sarva Darshanas in uh, Lal Bahadur Shastri Vidyapit and later on he gave them in the book form that book is published that uh, Sarva Darshan Samanvaya. So he is creating, he is seeing a harmony between various systems and numerous systems, I think more than 50 he discusses them there. Even Western philosophy discusses very authentically. He has, he has studied Western philosophers and he has investigated them from the point of view of a traditional pandit. Gopal Shastri Darshan Kesari was a great traditional pandit of Kashi. Mm -hmm. And his Panini, Panini Prabhupada we used to study in our Prathma course. That is another thing. So uh, this uh, such text, they try to create a harmonious view 
and create a dialogue between uh, diverse systems. I will omit this Madhvacharya's order of he keeps both Arhat first, then Ramanuj, then Purna Pragya, that is Madhva, then Nakulish, then Parshupat, then Shev. Ultimately, Advaita Vedanta com comes on the last position, that is the highest. So, and he, then he sees that he will he would suggest that the ideas have grown in, in the other, in the next system, from the former to the other. There is a development. But Haribhadra Suri is a great person that way. And I would uh, make some remarks about him, then I would finish. I am running short of time. And he he's made enormous contribution to the world of philosophy. And a great literature also. What a wonderful person he has been. If you read his Dhurta Khyana, Dhurta Khyana in, uh, uh, in uh, Prakrit, and I think Samskar Chaya is not available. I have translated it from Prakrit into Hindi and that is published in one of my books, Shresht Kaurahani Kahaniya. So, um, wonderful work. There is, I think there is no equal to it in the whole world library, perhaps. It, the text like Dhurta Khyana is very rare thing. And there also he makes dialogues with the whole tradition in his own way, in a very humorous, sarcastic way as, a, as, a, as an author of prose, hu, humor in prose. So uh, that is that is that also we will try to come to it today. Maybe some more time, maybe add out because this Haribhadra Suri to me is somewhat important, and uh, he was engaged in constructive debate and extraordinary. He had an extraordinary sensitivity to understand the point of view of his opponent, and uh, though he was a devout follower of Mahavira, he is writing a commentary on Dignaga's Nyaya Praveshika Sutram. And he is appreciating Dignaga. The beauty of it is that, like Vajaspati Mishra, you see, Vajaspati Mishra is writing commentary on Sankhya Karika, on, Brahma, on Shankar Bhashya, Brahma Sutra, and Vaisheshika also, perhaps. And on whatever system is right, his commentary, like a Samvad Purusha, he becomes one with that system. That is the quality of a Samvad Purusha. That you, you just enter into the thought world of that system and you become one with them. After that, of course, you will have to come out, but to appreciate that system, to sympathize with that system, you can't stand as an alien to that system. Otherwise, you are not a proper dialogue man. That is what Buddha or Mahavira or Gandhi or J. Krishnamurti would do. So the, they would enter into your thought world to, to become one with you and to appreciate you. So Haribhadra Suri does that. Uh, Vachaspati Mishra also does that. They are also, they are great Samvad Purushas. So uh, in his uh, the commentary on Dignaga, he, he simultaneously does a salutation to Mahavira and Buddha, equally applicable to Buddha and Mahavira. And he says that I have high regards for both and I have high regards for Dignaga also. And in this way he proceeds and he, then he would explore the inherent unities also. And his Shad Darshan Samucha and other, he has written Vitanda text also. He, he demolishes some system against Sunyavada. He is talking in some in, in some of his work. And his Anekant Vijay Pataka is also a very good text uh, to, uh, on Anekanta, how Anekanta is, uh, is desired in the world of philosophy, how through Anekanta we can conquer the world. So this. Uh, he, he, he appreciates Dharmakirti also. He calls him Vadi Mukhya. And uh, he said that I don't have any prejudice for Mahavira, although he is a devout Jaina philosopher. And I do not foster any grudge for Kapila and others. I believe in the principle that whosoever speaks logically must be respected. This is a stanza, Pakshpato, Name Vire, Nadesha, Kapila, Ritu, etc. And I will omit many details. And uh, we could have perhaps talked about his uh, how he how he appreciates Advaita Vedanta from the point of view of an Anekanta philosopher and how he appreciates even Shunyavada from the uh, point of view of an Anekanta philosopher. That uh, he, he believes that all the ideologies, are, ideologies aim at one and the same target that is moksha. Therefore, the points of disagreement between them may be rectified and you can see the inherent harmony for the refutation of Neratya. So now he has to refute Neratnya. Neratnya Buddha ka wo to fit nahi hoga. 
जैन दर्शन में सो ही सेज ही साइड्स वेदा टू सपोर्ट नेरात में दैट फ्रॉम दिस एंगल वी कैन सपोर्ट नेरात में वादा दैट इवेन वेदा श्रुति सेज दैट स्वयं ज्योति सदा एव आत्मा तथा वेदे अपि पठ्यते आत्मा इज स्वयं ज्योति सो यू कैन से दैट इन इट सेल्फ इट इज इट इज जस्ट इनलाइटनमेंट देयर फॉर यू कैन से दैट नेरात्म्या इज देयर इफ इफ यू ओनली लाइट इज देयर सो योर आत्मा इज नॉट सेपरेट फ्रॉम लाइट सो यू कैन सपोर्ट नेरात्म्य वादा दैट परहेप्स बुद्धा माइट हैव एप्रिशिएटेड व्हाट ही सेड ए बुद्धिस्ट फिलॉसफर्स माइट नॉट हैव एग्रीड सो इन दिस वे ही इज ट्राइंग टू क्रिएट ब्रिजेस अक्रॉस वेरियस थॉट वर्ड्स ही एप्रिशिएट appreciate shankara's shankara was later to him but he appreciates advait vedanta this way so from this he cites so many schools of philosophy subhavat kalvad purushkarvad and uh, he discusses them and advaitin's position he would discuss and he said that at parmarthika level everything is brahman i agree to that if that is the postulation then there is there cannot be a, any vipratipatti with even an even an advait vedantin and because it will inculcate the view of equanimity in subsidiary sense and not in the primary sense and that is the aim of, aim of uh, anekantavad also therefore we are in agreement with them of course charvaka system he would criticize he vehemently criticized charvaka systems and uh, then uh, on this we he raises potent objection on the basis of choice of freedom if a man has freedom of choice and has to decide his own course of action god becomes unnecessary then trying to reconcile with theistic presumption he adds that noble souls who have attained liberation may be called as gods this is his way of uh, uh, creating creating a, a, a sort of synthesis that uh, if you are a, if you are an atheist i can say this from the, your side if you are a theist i can say this from your side because your aim and my aim may be similar for the you are also trying for the emancipation or for salvation so all this uh, now about dhurta khyana okay it's a, you can uh, find this text it's a great text literary text a masterpiece of its own kind now how he enters into dialogues in a very satirical humor he enters into dialogues with the whole mythological world whole mythological vedic world that five dhurtas assemble in this text very interesting story panch dhurt log milte hain and they have a shart between them they have a contract कि सबसे ज्यादा बड़ी गप्प जो सुनाएगा वो हमारा धूर्त शिरोमणि होगा दी पर्सन हु नेरेट्स द ग्रेटेस्ट गोसिप पर्सन हु बिकम्स द ग्रेटेस्ट गोसिप मैंगर विल बी आवर आवर लीडर सो ईच वन नेरेट्स इज स्टोरी समबडी से दैट आई वाज गोइंग इन आई एंटर्ड इनटू ए स्मॉल पॉट स्मॉल जग लोटे में मैं घुस गया उसी लोटे में हाथी भी घुस गया एन एलिफेंट ऑल्सो एंटर्ड इन टू then i was fighting with that elephant and ultimately i came out of that lota that small jug and that elephant got stuck there he put out his 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 sound uh, uh, shunda from there and then he got stuck there and i ran away after that such gossiping they are doing then other four people ob- object how comes that you can enter a small jug then he says that if hanuman can enter the mouth of that sursa becoming as small as a as, as a mosquito i could have become as small as a, as a mosquito and have entered either you say that this story of hanuman is wrong or believe in me therefore they have to believe in him so all this great gossiping all this great gossiping goes on throughout the text in that way he deconstructs the whole mythological world in this dhurta khyana that is another way of entering through deconstruction he is uh, making a sort of vada and samvada with that 
So I will end here. I have taken some more time. I will ask uh, the part. Shall we allow some time for discussion? Five minutes for discussion. If the participants have any thing to say, I I don't think there would be many points for discussion here. And uh, if there is anything anybody wants to say, five minutes I will make. I will allow for questions. Or sir, if you allow me, uh, sir, if you allow me, I would like to pick up from uh, T TSC Reader's tradition and individual talent, where TSC Reader says that an, an individual has to uh, surrender himself uh, before the tradition. But later on, uh, uh, another critic, Harold Boom, says no. A new writer will have to fight for his own uh, survival. He, he has uh, always an anxiety of influence that everything is written and he has to write something which is different. And he gives a theory of a map of misreading that every reading is a misreading. Okay. Therefore, every writing is also miswriting. So this anxiety to write differently is inherent in a new writer. So therefore, uh, why should we, so this is my point, if you can illuminate it further, ki what should be the path? No, I, could, I can only say that uh, a person who is, uh, uh, who is surrendering his soul to enter into dialogue with an earlier, uh, earlier author, is making dialogue with the earlier author in his own way. And a person who is misreading the earlier author or doing it in a different way is having his own dialogic strategy with the, with the older text. So both of them are trying to create a sort of dialogue with the earlier text. That much only we can say, although uh, this, this may not be satisfactory at this moment because it's a complicated issue and we will be walking into the whole literary theory of Eliot. And I have only read two essays by Eliot, that also long, long back. That is not my area. I cite one or two of his paragraphs. They appear to me very appealing. And apart from that, I am unauthorized to say anything. You are the expert there. So whatever you say, I, I, I quite agree that that, that may be. But what, uh, I, I can only say that differing with earlier author and try to de trying to deconstruct him and writing in a different way from them, is also a dialogic strategy because you are trying to uh, trying to continue the tradition in your own way through disagreements and entering the soul of the earlier author and, and having an agreement with him. But there there is a there can be a, a kind of harmony between the two. You see, Kalidasa and Bhavuti they are poles apart. The whole world of emotions of Bhavuti it is entirely dif different from Kalidasa, and sometimes they are responding to the earlier author in a different way. Kalidasa is responding to Bhasa that look, if you did that, I will show, I will show you that I can do it in an entirely different way. My way is different. That, that is also an, a dialogic strategy. Kalidasa as a poet is a great poet of dialogue. He is entering into dialogue with with uh, several traditions, with several literary traditions, with several authors like Valmiki and Bhasa. In the same way, Bhavuti being a great scholar, great philosopher poet. So he is entering into dialogue with diverse philosophical schools and earlier authors like Valmiki and Kalidasa also, and yet he is differing with them. So if you enter the world of a literary text, you may come out of it and then you can disagree with it. So there is, after Anand Vardhana had enumerated three kinds of uh, literary correspondences, there some, the word samvada is used in the sense of correspondence so far as I think. So Anand Vardhana says that correspondences happen in the world of literature, but one should not assume that the later poet has done some copying of the earlier poet. And then he discusses the whole concept of samvada or correspondence. So he, he says that there can be a alekhya prakhya, like a portrait of a man you are creating his portrait. Like, so you are copying that 
उसका चित्र रचना की तरह आप कॉपी कर रहे हैं और देन 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 बिंब प्रतिबिंब वत यू आर कॉपिंग लाइक ए जेरोक्स कॉपी देन देर कैन बी ए संवाद तुल्य दे ही तुल्य दैट दे आर टू पर्सनैलिटीज ए पार्ट बट देर इज सम रिजेम्बलेंस लाइक टू ट्विन ब्रदर्स ईच ऑफ दी ट्विन ब्रदर हैज इज ओन डिफरेंट पर्सनैलिटी जैसा फिल्मों में होता है कि एक भाई खलनायक निकल गया और एक भाई जो जुड़वा थे उनमें से वो बहुत ही संत निकल गया और उनकी उनका व्यक्तित्व तो बहुत भिन्न है सो दी आउटर दी एक्सटीरियर में भी सिमिलर बट यू पुट एन एंटायरली डिफरेंट सोल इन टू दैट स्ट्रक्चर यू क्रिएट बाई बाई एडोप्टिंग दैट एडोप्टिंग फ्रॉम द अर्लियर आथर सो राजशेखरा गिव्स ए फोर्थ कैटेगरी ऑफ परपुर प्रवेश सदृश वेरी वंडरफुल कॉन्सेप्ट यू सी ऑफ राजशेखरा so i take two uh, two connotations of parpur pravesha pur is uh, a city so you go to a city and understand the layout of a city where are the gardens where are the mohallas where are the colonies and then on a land you make your own city and you create your own concept of another city there can be this type of dialogue between two great literary text between the earlier author and the later authors and they much very much be differing with each other but the later author has entered the whole world of the earlier author and then has tried to differ and make a dialogue through differences and parpur pravesh sadasha pur also means sharir like the sharirak bhashya there so uh, entering into the body through your soul and then coming out of it when you coming when you come out of it you are a different person you differ from the body which you had entered so shankracharya through his soul enters in the body of the dead king and he becomes one with it then he has the experience of all the amorous activities all the love making that goes on in the uh, harem of that king and after that he comes out of that and after that he remains untouched with it he creates his own world but he can reply to the queries of bharati mishra about kama purushartha the, the, this was also a, one of the greatest debate between mandan mishra and uh, shankaracharya which i couldn't discuss where bharati mishra the wife of mandan mishra was the jury and bharati mishra when her husband was defeated she challenged shankaracharya and the question she asked was that what is kama purushartha and uh, how will it lead to emancipation of a human soul us us par humne koi episode dekha kahin tv mein itna vulgar bhasha mein puch rahi thi ki aap kya jante hain istri purush yon sambandh ke bare mein uske bare mein batai aisi murkhta ki baat hai so bharti was asking him about kam purushartha shankaracharya said that i am a brahmachari and i have not studied kam purushartha then she said you go and study kam purushartha you are not a complete philosopher until you understand kam purushartha which is one of the important purusharthas so then after entering the soul of the dead king and coming out of it as the story says it might be just a gossip coming out of it shankaracharya was a different man he was he didn't become amruk and he could create his own conceptual world but he could reply to bharati mishra's questions so entering into the world or surrendering your say yourself to the uh, earlier author you can come out uh, your jeev or atma or soul can come out and create uh, his or her own conceptual world this much uh, i can only say otherwise we will discuss this between us and may, there may be many more things to be said uh, i hope we are running short of time and i now ask professor kala acharya you take your time 15 minutes were given i'm sorry we have taken some more time today and there was a lot of इधर उधर की बातचीत बट देन आई कुडंट हेल्प दैट प्रोफेसर कला आचार्य इज अ वेल नोन स्कॉलर ऑफ संस्कृत एंड शी रन्स ए संस्कृति संवर्धन प्रतिष्ठान ग्रेट वर्क इज बीइंग डन गुरुकुला इज बीइंग रन देयर एंड अदरवाइज शी इज नोन बाय हर स्कॉलरली कंट्रीब्यूशन एंड विद दिस रिमार्क्स आई कॉल अपॉन प्रोफेसर कला आचार्य टू मेक रिमार्क्स ऑन अ वेरी what in end theme she has taken of interfaith religious dialogues professor kala acharya i congratulate professor radhavallabh ji tripathi 
for giving such an exclusive treatment to the topic concept of samvada and understanding the dialogic mind while we discuss the topic it is necessary to find a scientific way to samvada based on scriptures to me shravana manana and nididhyasana can be an ideal method of samvada you have quoted uh, from vatsayana bhashya adhyayana shravana chintanadi chintanani the same i am uh, taking from upanishads this is the first step the next step is to enter into a friendly frame of mind it should be made for obtaining knowledge and not for the sake of criticizing others views the prashna upanishad provides us how samvad can take place amongst disciples and guru without underestimating someone's view point and with the least ambition to override someone in this upanishad bharadwaja sukesha shaibya satya kam gargya sauryya mani aswarayana kosalya bhargo vidarbhi kabandhi katyayana approach people other to seek knowledge of the para brahma they were asked to stay at his place for one year after the completion of one year they all went together to people other going together itself depicts their fellow feeling <coughs> then each one of them one after another raises question in consonance of what the previous one has asked this series of question answers is an exposition of different dimensions of the supreme brahman and while concluding people other says about brahman there is nothing higher than that nata param asti the disciples praised him and said thou indeed are our father who takes us to the other shore of ignorance nama param rushibhya nama param rushibhya now further i want to say that introversion is necessary for samvad the katopanishad says you all may be you all know parache khani vetron swambhu etc the creator pierces the openings of the senses outward therefore one looks outward and not inward some wise man who seeks amrutatva immortality with his eyes inward saw the same the kotha upanishad also says the wise man should restrain speech in mind the mind he should restrain in the intellect the intellect he should restrain in the great self and the great self he should restrain in the tranquil self the process of introversion thus thus is is uh, uh, enunciated enunciated in the upanishad it prepares a ground for samvad in brief i would say the process of introversion is to listen to one's own thoughts it is to close the window and focus on the mirror and then being endowed with insight overcoming the mere intellectual level in spirit of sharing one should enter samvad the samvad in a family is reflected in the atharva veda and i am sure you all know uh, this also that uh, it has been said anuvarta pitu putro matra bhavtu sammanah let the let the son follow the father and should be one mind of one mind with the mother let the wife speak sweet and gentle words to the husband let not the brother hate brother let not sister hate sister unanimous united in purpose speak words with friendliness now we come to darshana uh, samvada in the area of philosophy it has been stated in the nay sutra that samvada with those you had already quoted this sutra that samvada with those who are profound in vidya has to be done jnana grahana bhasa tad vidya sacha samvada that you have already quoted so i need not talk about it and then the, further it has been said that that samvad you know, in that samvad the preceptor the core learners are to be approached who seek the benefit of the learner and do not have jealousy against him tam shishya guru sabramachari vishishta shreyo arthi bhi anasuyu bhi abhyapaya further we move to the intertextual samvad this is possible by citing the text having similar purport side by side to elucidate the point in discussion 
ವಿಜ್ಞಾನ ಭಿಕ್ಷು ಅಂದ ಯೋಗ ಸೂತ್ರ ವಿಶೇಷ ವಿಶೇಷ ಲಿಂಗ ಮಾತ್ರ ಲಿಂಗಾನಿ ಗುಣ ಪರಮಾಣಿ ಶೋಸ್ ದ ರೀಕನ್ಸಿಲೇಟರಿ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ವ್ಯೂ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ದ ಸಾಂಖ್ಯ ದ ಯೋಗ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ವೇದಾಂತ ಆನ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಸೂತ್ರ ಹಿ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತಾ ದ ವರ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತಾ ಅವ್ಯಕ್ತಾದೀನಿ ಭೂತಾನಿ ಎಕ್ಸೆಟ್ರಾ ದ ವರ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ದ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಪುರಾಣ ಅ ವರ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ಮಹಾಭಾರತ ಮೋಕ್ಷ ಧರ್ಮ ಪರ್ವ ಅ ವರ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ಕೂರ್ಮ ಪುರಾಣ ಒನ್ ವಿಶ್ ಒನ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ದ ಶ್ವೇತಾಶ್ವೇತರ ಉಪನಿಷತ್ ಶ್ವೇತಾಶ್ವತರ ಉಪನಿಷತ್ ಒನ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ಅಗ್ನಿ ಪುರಾಣ ಅಂಡ್ ಒನ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ದ ಭಾಗವತ ಪುರಾಣ ಸಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದೀಸ್ ವರ್ಸಸ್ ಆರ್ ಕೋಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಪೂರ್ವ ಪಕ್ಷ ಅಂಡ್ ಸಮ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಉತ್ತರ ಪಕ್ಷ ಆನ್ ದ ಯೋಗ ಸೂತ್ರ ತಾಸಾಂ ಅನಾಧಿತ್ವಂ ಚಾಚಿಸೋ ನಿತ್ಯತ್ವ ವಿಚ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸಬ್ಲಿಮಿನಲ್ ಇಂಪ್ರೆಷನ್ಸ್ ವಾಸನ ಆರ್ ವಿಥೌಟ್ ಬಿಗಿನಿಂಗ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದ ಡಿಸೈರ್ ಟು ಲಿವ್ ಇಸ್ ಪರ್ಮನೆಂಟ್ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನ ಭಿಕ್ಷು ಕೋರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಮೊಹೋಪನಿಷದ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಕಾಂಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಚಿತ್ತಾಕಾಶ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಇಥರ್ ಚಿದಾಕಾಶ ಕಾನ್ಶಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಇಥರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಕಾಶ ಇಥರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಸೂತ್ರ ಹಿ ಕೋರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಬೃಹತ್ ಯೋಗ್ಯ ಅಜ್ಞಾವಲ್ಕ ಸ್ಮೃತಿ ಸರ್ವ ಧರ್ಮಾನ್ ಪರಿತ್ಯಜ್ಯ ಮೋಕ್ಷ ಧರ್ಮ ಸಮಾಶ್ರಯ ಹಿ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತಾ ಏಷಾ ತೇ ಅಭಿಹಿತಾ ಸಾಂಖ್ಯ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನ ಭಿಕ್ಷು ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಅಪ್ಲೈಸ್ ಕನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಒನ್ ದರ್ಶನ ಟು ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೇನ್ ದ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಅದರ್ ದರ್ಶನ ಫಾರ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಹಿ ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ವೆಲಾಸಿಟಿ ಆಸ್ ಅ ಸಂಸ್ಕಾರ ವಿಚ್ ಈಸ್ ಅ ಬಿಲೀಫ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ನ್ಯಾಯ ದರ್ಶನ ವೈಲ್ ಕಮೆಂಟಿಂಗ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಸೂತ್ರ ಹೇ ತು ಫಲಾಶ್ರಯ ಲಂಬನ ಹಿ ಸಂಗೃಹಿತತ್ವಾತ್ ಏಷಾಮ ಭಾವೆ ತದ ಭಾವ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಯೋಗ ಸೂತ್ರ ಅಂಡ್ ಹಿ ಈಸ್ ಕೋಕಿಂಗ್ ದ ಕನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ನ್ಯಾಯ ದರ್ಶನ ಸೇಯಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ವೆಲಾಸಿಟಿ ಹಿ ಸೇಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ದ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಸ್ಪೋಕ್ ವಿಲ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಧರ್ಮ ಅಧರ್ಮ ಸುಖ ದುಃಖ ರಾಗ ಅಂಡ್ ದ್ವೇಷ ಇಂಪೇರ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ದ ಸ್ಟಾಫ್ ಆಫ್ ಅವಿದ್ಯಾ ಈಸ್ ರೋಟೇಟೆಡ್ ದೇರ್ ಫಾರ್ ವಾಸನ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಸಬ್ಲಿಮಿನಲ್ ಇಂಪ್ರೆಷನ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಕಾಸ್ ದ ನ್ಯಾಯ ಸೂತ್ರ ಸ್ಪೀಕ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಫಿಲಾಸಫಿ ಆಸ್ ಅ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಯೋಗ ದ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ ರೆಕಮೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಯೋಗಿಕ್ ಮೆಡಿಟೇಷನ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಟಾಟ್ ಇನ್ ಕ್ವೈಟ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸಸ್ ಸಚ್ ಆಸ್ ಅ ಫಾರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಅ ಕೇವ್ ಆರ್ ಅ ಸ್ಯಾಂಡಿ ಬೀಚ್ ದ ನ್ಯಾಯ ಸೂತ್ರ ಗೋಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ಅರಣ್ಯ ಗುಹಾ ಪುಲಿನಾ ದಿಶು ಯೋಗಾಭ್ಯಾಸೋಪದೇಶ ದೆನ್ ಒನ್ ಅದರ್ ಅದರ್ ಸೂತ್ರ ನ್ಯಾಯ ಸೂತ್ರ ತದರ್ಥ ಯಮ ನಿಯಮಾಭ್ಯಾ ಆತ್ಮ ಸಂಸ್ಕಾರ ಯೋಗಾಚ ಅಧ್ಯಾತ್ಮ ವಿದ್ಯುಪಾಯ ಟೆಲ್ಸ್ ಅಸ್ ದಟ್ ದ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಸೀಕರ್ ಶುಡ್ ಪ್ಯೂರಿಫೈ ಒನ್ ಸೋಲ್ ಬೈ ಯಮ್ ಆಸ್ ನಿಯಮ ಅಂಡ್ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಚುಯಲಿಸಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಯೋಗ ಆಸ್ ರಿಪೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಯೋಗ ದಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಸಂವಾದ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ಟೂ ಡಿಫರೆಂಟ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಫಿಲಾಸಫಿ ಅಂಡ್ ವಿ ಆಲ್ ನೋ ದಟ್ ಮೆಡಿಟೇಷನ್ ಇನ್ ಸಮ್ ಆರ್ ಅದರ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಇಸ್ ರೆಕಮೆಂಡೆಡ್ ಬೈ ಆಲ್ ದ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಫಿಲಾಸಫಿ ಎಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಚಾರ್ ವಾಕ್ ದ ವೈಶೇಷಿಕ ವ್ಯೂ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಚಿತ್ತ ಬೀಂಗ್ ಅಟೋಮಿಕ್ ಅಣು ಅಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ದ ಥಿಯರಿ ಆಫ್ ದ ನಯ್ಯಾಯಿಕಾಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವೈಶೇಷಿಕಾಸ್ ದಟ್ ಆಕಾಶ ಇಥರ್ ದೋ ಇಟರ್ನಲ್ ಇಸ್ ಮಟೀರಿಯಲ್ ಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸೌಂಡ್ and that is grasped by the ear is mentioned in the yoga article now about samvada samvada to bring to be uh, to build bridges between sorry samvada is meant for for, uh, for building gap or removing gap between the points of agreement and disagreement among philosophers <coughs> who are following the same school uh, that type of samvad is also seen in the commentaries for example the earlier position of nay was that salvation is achieved by an unerring realization of the true nature of the self and this knowledge is affected by the proper understanding of 16 
various legends al uh, also are narrated to establish samvad aikamatya between the authors of the sutras of darshanas on the yoga sutra tasa manaditvam chashi so nitya vachana vidyan bhikshu quotes the legend of yogi shukra who due to his anger towards the king of dandakaranya caused heavy rainfall for seven constant days and he made the land of dandaka live uh, with uh, he made it uh, he made the subjects of dandaka uh, that uh, king of dandaka uh, dandakaranya uh, run away from that uh, that land the story of the jadabharat uh, jadabharat from the bhagavata purana has been mentioned in uh, in the commentary on the same sutra to prove that mental deeds alone are superior to other deeds i will uh, i will skip uh, quoting the entire uh, sanskrit text sarva vijnana sampanna etc jadabhat realized and what is has been said in the commentary i will tell the gist of it Uh, Jadabharata realized Atman, even though he did not learn Veda from Guru and did not acknowledge sacrifices. Yoga, yoga was it also consists of innumerable legends in support of the doctrine. For example, the legend of Bhushunda in Nirvana Prakarna Purvardha, Samvada between Bali and Virochana, Bali and Sukracharya in Upasama Prakarna, and many more can be cited in this context. Now coming to inter-religious dialogue. Inter-religious dialogue is getting prominence in the present century. We find its norms laid down by the Emperor Ashoka in his Rock Edict Twelve. He says, "I quote, but the root is guarding one's speech, vacho gupti, so as to avoid the extolling of one's own religion and decrying of the religion of another, or speaking of it without occasion or relevance. Proper when proper occasions arise." persons of other religions should be honored suitably so this is the uh, this uh, edict says the norm for norms for inter religious dialogue which are relevant even today as we experience that in such dialogues there is a tendency to show that one's own religion is perfect there is nothing lacking in it and it is the only one that paves the way for salvation cultural differences should not be overlooked while establishing a base for that uh, base for samvad uh, this i insist upon because theological practical interreligious and intra religious differences have to be taken into account for the reason that these differences mark the distinguishing characteristic of a religion of a culture even of a school of philosophy so they should not be abolished as they are the identities of those particular religions cultures uh, systems of philosophy samvad is also necessary to develop international policies on the matters that concern and affect all human beings nay i would rather say that all living beings an appeal for samvad to safeguard the future of our own planet is the need of the hour failing which the environmental changes lack of natural resources and abundance abundance of natural calamities are bound to stake our life you have uh, spoken about mahatma gandhi in detail he dealt with inter religious dialogue on theoretical as well as practical level <coughs> his experience of community living provided space and opportunities to clear prejudices amongst the persons of different religions cultures races and nationality and this experiment to some extent led to mutual understanding vinoba ji added new dimensions to gandhi ji's practical views on religious studies with his experiments in bhudana gramadana and philosophy of sarvodaya combined with suraj now this one point uh, which i am going to make is not made in any commentary or uh, uh, never has been made uh, when someone speaks or write about some other i want to make this point that the body language is also indicative of some other the ashta satvika bhav indicate the philosophy the feeling or emotion uh, which are you you know very well stambhas vedo tha romancha swara mango tha vepatu vaivarna masru pralaya itashto satvika smruta they without use of force speak about the state of mind 
towards a particular object or towards the beloved or the devotion of a deity. So uh, just for the students who don't know Sanskrit, I just will translate what is Tambha is numbness, Sveda is perspiration, uh, Romancha is horripilation, Swarabhanga is stammering, Vepatu is trembling, Vaivarana is change in color of the face, etc. Ashru, Ashru is tears and Pralaya is unconsciousness. In the Ayurvedic text, especially in the Nihanda Ratnakara, the condition of a patient who himself cannot approach to the physician, the gravity of his ailment is surmised by the body language of the messenger, such as if the messenger comes running, if he is a galloping, if he is, he is not able to speak, and if he seems to be horrified, it is the indication that the patient is in a critical condition. So I think that this body language should be uh, taken into account when we talk of Samvata. And I will conclude with the popular verse, Pinde Pinde Matir Vinna, Kunde Kunde Namam Paiha, Jato Jato Namachara, Navavani Mukhe Mukhe. That particular expression, Navavani Mukhe Mukhe, is indicative of diversity of viewpoints. And the expression Navavani, show, Navavani shows that the seeds of beginning of a new vada or samvada or even samvada will always sprout till the human beings exist on this planet. With these words, I thank you one once again, sir, for giving me the opportunity and to all the members of the audience for giving a patient listening. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Kala Acharya, for this very scholarly presentation and uh, discussing many facets of the dialogic tradition through Sanskrit sources, right from Upanishads. <clears throat> and uh, you made a very pertinent suggestion that body language can also be a tool of dialogue and a very good suggestion also. Now I'll take uh, two more minutes uh, because I forgot to open the chat box and uh, some of the participants had directly raised their questions on this platform, but some have sent their questions or queries uh, through chat box and I find uh, four of them, about them, only within two minutes I will say something. One question is, is there untouchability in Veda? So I think there is uh, no untouchability in, uh, described in the Samhitas and the Suktas. They say Samani va Akuti, Samana Radhyani va Samani Prapa. So let us drink together, let us eat together. For all the society, all, all sections they say. So they, they talk of a society which is classless and there is, there is uh, that way there is no Varna in that Samaja where Rigveda was being, uh, the mantras of Rigveda were being seen. That much I can say that these are the later developments and the idea of untouchability comes much later, I think. And uh, Smriti Kala, the Smritis are written after the whole Vedic period is over. And when the whole uh, primal society, this uh, this uh, Adi Adim Samaj, the, the primal society, is 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 uh, is uh, is, uh, is, uh, is uh, transformed into a kind of feudal society, and then such uh, rules and the Varna system also comes. So no question of untouchability actually in Samvitas and Upanishads, also. Then uh, uh, why? Uh, so much authority is given to Manu. Uh, there, are, there, there are so many reasons why Manu has become so prominent. One of the reasons is that Manu is a great philosopher also. And he talks many very, very sensible things about life, history of creation and human destiny. And uh, uh, many systems he creates in a very systematically way. It's a very grand Smriti. You see, one of the most uh, exhaustive systems. But uh, yeah, the other reasons which, which we have discussed that uh, under colonization, the whole uni, whole multi-layered structure of our thought world was destroyed and uh, the, the legal system prevailed uh, on the basis of Manu Smriti only. And, uh, and an idea was given to us that uh, there is only one truth, one reality, so therefore only one Dharma Shastra can be there. So the wrong notions, conceptions about the traditions created in, under colonization, they are 
other reasons and the selfish motives of some very some kind of fanatic people they may be another reason a complex of reasons is there for this prominence of manusmriti besides the merit of the text itself then can indian constitution be called a dharma shastra i think it can be called as 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 our national dharma shastra and all other smritis will be uh, subsidiary to it now nowadays because the constitution is is uh, superior to us and uh, then uh, uh, one question is about uh, is there are there references to lgbtq in dharma shastras i don't think professor ashutosh dayal mathur who is who has actually gone through the whole corpus of dharma shastras may be able to reply if he is able to say anything otherwise what i can say here is that there are references to homosexual practices in mahabharata and they are rather condemned but vatsyayana is very sympathetic vatsyayana is a wonderful author and he understand the psychology between the behind these practices and just as he is very sympathetic to the prostitutes you see nothing like vatsyayana in his sympathy for the prostitutes who are down trodden and deceived and cheated he is sympathetic to those nagarakas who engage in such practices he describes the whole behavior also how they do it and how it becomes uh, necessary for them to do it etc etc so if you take vatsyayana also as a great shastrakara as i understand him and uh, he is also a seer then there the descriptions are there otherwise uh, nowhere else you will find we are puritans thank you very much i think we can end here and uh, tomorrow we will meet at 7 pm indian time and at 9:30 pm at my place thank you for being with us today we have taken a little bit more time tomorrow we'll try to be more punctual thank you so much sir thank you so thank much you. thank you thank you thanks to all thanks to all okay sir just one no, word namaskar yeah. namaskar one word is that uh, when you were talking about silence ramana maharshi is also a great example yes 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 very much so very much so yes. i quite appreciate and agree thank you okay